In this video, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to LT Spice, which is the free electronic circuit simulator provided by Analog Devices. And you can download it at this link, which I'll leave in the description for Windows and Mac. In this video, I'll give you a brief introduction to LT Spice and DC operating point analysis, looking at a very simple op amp circuit. And this video is actually an extract from my mixed signal hardware design with KiCad course, and I'll leave links to that in the description below. Thank you very much to Altium for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try out Altium Designer for yourself, they're offering a free trial if you go to altium.com forward slash yt forward slash Phil's lab. To help you out when you're using your free trial of Altium or if you just want some Altium tips in general, I have a few videos on my channel. For example, this one guiding you through a complete Altium Designer PCB design starting from an empty project all the way to ordering. I'd just quickly like to show you how to use LT Spice to simulate parts of your analog schematic. Now, LT Spice can also be used to simulate digital circuitry, but I mainly use it to simulate things such as op amp circuits, filters, anything analog. I'm just going to give you a brief introduction now, and then as a little activity, I'd like you to try and implement the third order Butterworth filter in LT Spice and see if you can plot the frequency response. If you just Google LT Spice, you'll probably find this analog device's website and you can download LT Spice for Windows or Mac. I believe there's some sort of version for Linux as well, but I'm running Windows, so I would just download that. Once you've opened up LT Spice, the first thing is to create a new schematic page by clicking this button up here. And your main hotbar is up here. So you can select ground, you can label nets, draw wires, choose resistors, capacitors, and ductors. And here, this button is to choose various components. So the first thing I'd like to simulate is that op amp bias generator we saw that generates our split rail reference voltage. So I'll go up here and go to the left to find the op amp section. Now, since this is an analog devices program, they pretty much only have their op amps in here. So for the sake of simplicity, and for now it would take too long to import a different op amp model, I would just choose one of these standard ones here. And I believe this AD820 is a single supply rail to rail output op amp, so fairly similar to what we're using. So click on that, click OK, and you can start placing with the left button and it'll create copies of that. If I right click, I can cancel the command. Now LT Spice to me has a bit of an annoying user interface, so it's not that intuitive. You have to use a lot of these F keys, the function keys to move stuff around, to copy things and to place things. So F7 allows me to click and move, for example, designators. Next thing I'd like to place is a ground, so I can press G to place a ground. I will connect that to the negative supply pin of my op amp. The next thing I'd like to do is connect the positive supply pin of my operational amplifier. As opposed to KiCad or Altium or any other simulation software, you have to place voltage sources and then connect them up. So to me, that's a bit messy. So if you go to component, go back up and then go to the right to find a voltage source. Let me just place that. I'll just place that above the op amp. I can left click to drag and move. Then I place my ground again. And up here, I will simply place a net name. If I didn't place a net name, I would have to draw wires, for example, down here to my op amp, and I find that very messy. So the way I do that is place a net name. I can do that by pressing F4 and then typing in my net name here. So I'll just type that as VCC, place that here, and then also connect VCC to my positive supply pin. Now these VCCs, as long as anything shares the same net name, they will be connected. If I right click on a device, I can open up the properties and this is simply a DC source. So I'll give that a value of 3.3 volts, which is our supply rail in our final design. To draw wires, I simply have to press F3. I wanna make this into a voltage follower. So I need to connect the negative input to the output of this operational amplifier. So I can just click and draw lines around like this. The next thing what I want to do is then place resistors, two resistors, so a resistor divider and a capacitor to filter my supply rail and generate my reference. To place a resistor, press R. I can place another one. To place a capacitor, press C. Now, again, I want to press F3 to connect everything up. I can press F6 to copy, so I'll copy my VCC net name over here. Then I can go down by clicking with my left mouse button, press G to place grounds. And that is our basic circuitry for now. I want to change the resistor and capacitor values to what we have on the schematic. And this is what we had on the schematic. Equal resistors as 1K, 1K, and a 22 microfarad capacitor. 
I calculated the cutoff frequency to be 15 Hz, so we can verify that in LT Spice. You can see I also have the decoupling capacitor here. Now I won't add the decoupling capacitor to LT Spice because the simulation will not be affected by placing it or not. So right click and we want a 1 kilo ohm resistor here. And right click and we want a 1 kilo ohm resistor here. And a 22 microfarad capacitor here. The first thing I typically do is then run a DC operating point simulation to see, okay, are the DC values of my device or my circuit correct? The way you run simulations in LT Spice is by using what's called a simulation command. So if I click on run, LT Spice will tell me I haven't set a simulation command yet. And there are various different types. We have a transient, for example, if you want to examine a step response or AC analysis, if you want to examine the frequency response, we can DC sweep, noise, transfer functions. But what we're interested in initially is the operating point. And that's a very simple command. It's simply dot op. Click OK, and then it already runs. Now you can see here I have various node voltages, I have various currents, node voltage at VCC, that's 3.3. And then I can really see my first problem. This node voltage is called N001, and that's at 1.65 volts, and N002, which is also at 1.65 volts. I know this is this point and this point, just because I know the circuit. But this brings you back to the point that it's incredibly important to label your nets. If I label my nets, again, by pressing F4, this net VREF, and I'll call the output vcom. If I run my command again, by clicking run, you can see we now have proper names for our voltages. And this is why it's so important to label your nets in simulation, in your schematic, and so on. So the common mode voltage at the output of the op amp is 1.65, since it's a voltage follower, and that's what we expect. And the reference voltage generated by this resistor divider is also 1.65. We can also see the currents through various devices. So we have nothing essentially through the capacitor, which is to expect at DC, and we have various currents running through the resistors. Since this is a FET input stage, currents through the resistors are equal, and because there's no or very, very little biased current drawn by this op amp. The next thing we'd like to do is then change this from a DC analysis to see what effect this filter actually has. 